Hello and welcome. My name is Carol and welcome to this lesson on painting lemons with oils. I've been painting with oils for almost 40 years now. Yes, that's a long time. And I'm thrilled to be sharing some of the things I've learned along the way. In this lesson, I want to share with you some basic tips that any beginner to intermediate painter can apply. Even if you're just starting out painting with oils, you could still apply these tips to your work and you'll be that much further ahead. And also acrylic painters can apply these tips as the color rules are still the same. So without further ado, we'll be painting from this reference photo here, which I took from a simple setup on my dining room table with soft window light. And for the materials that we'll be using, I used oil painting paper in this lesson, but you can use canvas if you want to, or any support of your choice, such as panel or whatnot. And the paint colors were cadmium yellow light and cadmium yellow deep, but you don't need both. If you just have one of those, that's perfectly fine. And then we also are going to use burnt umber, burnt sienna, cobalt or ultramarine blue, whichever one you have, white, and a little bit of alizarin crimson or permanent alizarin for the background, but it's not necessary. And for the brushes, you can use a flat brush for the background. And for the lemons themselves, you can use any small size flat or filbert brushes. I do prefer the filberts because they're rounded, so they're great for painting round shapes. And you'll also need a fine round brush or a fine liner for details. Size one or two or even a zero is fine. You just want something small enough that you'll be able to do finer details. You'll also need a synthetic fan brush. It's smoother than a bristle brush, so don't get the bristle fan brush. And this will help you to smooth things out in the painting without leaving streaks. And I always stress in a lot of my lessons to use what you have, learn to work with what you have. You don't have to go out and buy all kinds of expensive materials, especially when you're learning. And the more you can learn to use what you have, the better you'll become as an artist. And here I have my paints laid out on my palette. I like to use the Canson paper palettes and I just use a fresh one with each new painting or once the palette gets full, I can just pull off the page and start fresh with the new palette. And to start mixing the background, I'm taking burnt umber and some of the alizarin crimson and some cobalt blue and I'm going to mix a nice black with this. And I'm just going to keep adding some blue and some red in there until I get the black I want. I also like to use a bit of liquid in my paint mixture. I didn't mark it in the materials because it's really not necessary. Liquid is a fast drying medium and it helps my paints dry quicker. Usually they're dry by the next day, dry to the touch or after a couple of days. I try not to use more than about 20% liquid to my paint mixture. And this also gives a nice glossy surface. So I'm just going to mix that in and then once it's properly mixed in, I'll be able to start with my background. Now I'm ready to start applying paint to the background. I'm painting on oil painting paper. It's made by Arches and I love this for studies and I'm using a flat bristle brush and I've got my paper taped down just to make a nice clean edge that I'm able to peel off after. If you're working with a canvas, you don't need to tape anything down naturally. You would just go ahead and paint straight up onto your canvas or your surface. And so I'm just going to roughly brush that in. You can also use synthetic brushes if you're more comfortable with those. And I make sure to cover everything completely as I go along. I normally work on an easel also, but just because of the recording process, it's easier to have my camera directly above what I'm painting. So I have my painting paper down flat onto my desk. I will speed this up just a little bit as I complete the background.
I make sure not to go over my drawing and I just want to go all around the lemons and bring the paint as close to the lemons as possible without losing my sketch. And I never use black paints. The only time I would use a black paint is to add a very small amount in another color. But if I want to use black, such as in this background, I always mix my paints using burnt umber and cobalt blue or ultramarine blue or any other really deep dark blue. And then sometimes I'll use alizarin crimson or even purple or other colors, depending on what I'm working on. But I always start with a base of burnt umber and a dark blue, such as cobalt blue or ultramarine blue. Using, um, using black paint straight out of the tube does not give you a nice black. It gives you dead, flat blacks, and you really don't want that. You have much nicer colors when you mix your own black. And now I have some cadmium yellow light, and I'm just going to start filling in and blocking in my lemon. And I'm just going around the shape carefully. And I'm just going to go around and keep filling in the color. One of the most important principles in oil painting is the fat over lean rule. And what this means is you do not want to start off with your fattest, thickest layers or your oiliest layers. So for this reason, I am not mixing in any linseed oil or oils into my paint at this moment. Should you do that, you do that at the very end or for your final layers. And I am also applying just a very thin coat of paint. I don't load too much paint on my brush and I make sure that my initial layers are very thin and this way I'll be able to finish off my last layers with thicker fattier paints. The reason you don't want to start off with your layers too thick from the beginning or too fatty is because if you have thinner layers of paint on top of a fat layer eventually that top layer will crack because the layer underneath still won't be dry. The top layer will dry faster than the bottom layer and this, was, this is what will cause oil paints to crack. So remember to always start off with thin layers and then work up to your thickest, fattiest layers for the end. You can also thin your initial layers using either turpentine or odorless mineral spirits. I prefer using liquid, so I'm not using the turpentines just because I like to work fast. I like my paints to dry faster. But this is definitely something you can do. And now I'm taking a little bit of burnt umber and I'm going to start laying down some darker colored paints in this area where a shadow is going to be. I never use black to shadow any yellows. I always use burnt umber and burnt sienna. These give you a much richer and truer shadow. So I'm just going to lay down a little bit of the burnt umber. Painting lemons like this is also a wonderful lesson in values. And by values, I mean learning how to use lights and darks properly, having proper contrast. And so you start with your lightest colors and work all your way down to the darkest colors and all the colors in between that. And this is how you achieve good values. You don't have to have colors perfect when you paint, but if you have excellent values, your paintings are going to look a lot more realistic. So I'm just blocking in a little bit of darker paints in certain areas, just establishing where my shadows are going to be or my darker areas will be. And now I'm beginning to apply some burnt umber on this lemon also. This portion of the lemon will be really dark by the time we're done. It'll appear as though it's emerging from the darkness. And it creates a really beautiful classical dramatic effect. Speaking of our value range, while we're doing this painting, this section here will have the darkest values.
and I'm extending some of that darker color underneath. We can't neglect that this part underneath the lemon will also be slightly shadowed. And I keep pushing some of this burnt umber into the yellow and this is giving us mid-tones, also helping us establish values. So our value range will range from the lightest colors to mid-tones to the darkest colors. I don't worry too much about details at this stage or about blending everything in properly. I'm just laying down color and just blocking in. The detailing and the refining comes towards the end. I've always joked that my paintings are very ugly until they get better. They're ugly for most of the process until the end once I start refining and detailing. And here I'm just establishing an even darker shadowed area. And now I am going to take out a soft fan brush and I'm just going to blend this in gently. I'm not worried about getting anything perfect at this stage, but I just want to get rid of some of those rough edges and smooth things out just a little bit. And now I'm going to soften this area as well. You can already see how we're establishing a nice value range from light tones to mid tones to darks. And as we continue the painting and we keep building lights in certain sections, you'll really see the full value range. Now I've mixed in a little bit of burnt sienna into my burnt umber mixture just because I want a slightly more reddish tone to my browns and I'm just going to start applying some of this. I find adding burnt sienna to my mid-tones creates such beautiful rich colors. There's a slight imperfection on the side of my lemon here, just a slight line and it's more shadowed than other portions. So I'm adding this in and eventually I'll build up some light around it so that it's obvious there's a small mark there. I don't always use the imperfections I find in fruit and vegetables when I paint still life, but I felt that for this lesson, it would be great to add it in just as an extension of learning how to paint light and shadows around certain things. And sometimes it's just nice to add the imperfections that you find. It makes a subject even more interesting to look at. Now I'm going to continue my background up to the lemon and I'm adding a little bit more brown and less of the blue and red. I don't want it as black towards the front. So more burnt umber. I'm trying to be very careful not to go into the lemon, but if you do, it's nothing to worry about. You just adjust as you go along. And I'm going to go blacker as I go more towards the rear, which will be the darkest part of our painting.
and I'm carefully going around this lemon completely covering my paper. I don't want to see any white by the time I'm finished. If you're painting on a very rough textured canvas, make sure you push the paint deep inside all of the little ridges and grooves. You don't want to see any parts of the white canvas showing through at all. Everything should be completely covered with paint. If you see any white bits of canvas showing through by the time you're done, it's either you didn't push hard enough on your brush or you didn't use enough paint. And I'm going to extend this black down behind the lemon. This will also be in a very dark shadowed area. And I carefully go around my lemon. And I'm still going to keep pushing that paint. Extending it a little bit underneath the lemon as well. This is also a shadowed area. And I'm just going to keep scrubbing that in. And I'm going to end the background just around this area. This is just slightly below the midway point. We don't ever want to have a line stop straight in the middle of a painting. It's not good composition. So either have your vertical line or sorry, your horizontal line slightly above the midway point or below. So in this case, it'll be below. Now I'm taking a clean dry brush and I'm just going to soften my edges. I want to have soft edges rather than hard edges. It's important the brush is soft and clean and dry and I wipe off excess paint and I use very soft and gentle pressure. I don't push hard because then I'll just remove the paint I've applied and it's going to create a mess rather than soften everything. So just use very gentle pressure and keep wiping off the excess paint. Make sure it's a synthetic brush so it's soft. Bristle brushes are too rough and again it would just scrape along inside that paint. So use a soft bristle brush. I like to keep old beat up brushes for this purpose. When some of my synthetic brushes get really old and beat up, I keep them and I use them for softening things. I'm going to blend along the edges here as well. By the time I'm done this painting, I want lost edges in this section. I want the lemon to get lost in the shade so that we don't see any harsh lines. And I'm blending this in as well. I could still see it. I apologize for the glare on the paper. It is wet paint and it's picking up the studio light. So until it's dry, it will create a glare. And for this section, the inside of the lemon, I took mostly white and added just a small drop of yellow and a small drop of burnt umber and mixed that together. I want to create a pale, dirty yellow. I never mix too much paint at once, otherwise I might end up wasting paint. So I always start off with very small amounts of each color and then mix until I'm satisfied with what I have. There's really no recipe to color mixing. It's something that comes with time. The more you practice, the better you get at it. Just remember to start off with very small amounts. This way you're not wasting any paint. I'm also using a filbert brush because the rounded tip helps me with the curves.
I want to completely cover the inside with paint also and block everything in. And I make sure to use the round tip of the brush and I let it do the work for me. Just like that. I also want to make sure I get my angles right because the lemon is on a tilted angle. So everything will be angled also. I'm being careful also to leave my outer edge unfinished so that I can go in after with some whiter paint. I don't want to cover this up with yellow. Again, I'm keeping my first layer very nice and thin. I don't want thick paint in here. Always trying to keep my fattiest layer or my thickest layer for the end. And now I've mixed in a little bit more burnt umber into my paint mixture. And I just want to go around some of the edges just to darken them up and it's creating a slight shadow. And it's giving us a little bit more depth and light inside the lemon itself. So I'm just using very light pressure and dabbing some color in and just very gently smoothing it in. See the difference it already makes just by adding that little bit of color. I find this to be so much fun when you see changes taking place like that just from doing simple little actions small strokes and it's not a lot of burnt umber either I took my mixture my pale yellow mixture the one I pre-mixed with white and a little bit of yellow and burnt umber and I just took that very same mixture and added just another slight drop of burnt umber not too much otherwise it'll be overpowering it's always much safer just to go slow when you're mixing your paints, trying to get a color right. Just add small amounts at a time until you're satisfied with your result. Look at how much difference this is already making. It's just amazing to see the changes. My brush strokes are very gentle here. Just a slight amount of pressure. I'm just blending things in together. 
If you find you have too much paint, just wipe off the excess on a paper towel or a rag. Now with the same paint mixture, I added a bit more burnt umber, just for this dark area in the middle of the lemon. I had a hole in the middle of my lemon. So this is what I'm just going to brush in right now and just add a little bit more of the darker mixture in certain areas. I decided I want a little bit more shadow. The shadow is just a slight touch more intense on this side of the lemon because of the direction the light is coming in through. And I'm just smoothing out some of that paint. Making sure everything is covered. Now I took some white and I added just a little bit of cobalt blue. You can use ultramarine blue if that's what you have. And I'm just going to fill in that white fleshy part or the pith. And I'm not too worried about getting it just perfect because I will have to go in later once this layer is dry and that's when I'm going to fix and adjust everything. But I just want to get some paint down in there so that everything is blocked in and covered with paint. Just make sure your brush is small enough to get in there. It's a bit tricky to not go over the yellow edges, but I'm trying to be as careful as possible because otherwise I'm going to end up with green paint. But either way, it's no big deal because whatever mistakes I make at this point, I'll just correct them later once this layer is dry and then I can go in and correct and make any, um, any adjustments. This part here is just a little trickier, but that's okay. I'll make my corrections later. And now I am just going to take a bigger brush. You could take a larger flat brush or whatever you have and I'm just using burnt umber and I'm going to lay down my tabletop and I'm going as close to the lemons as possible without going inside because the paint is still wet inside the lemons so I'm just being very careful and I just want to cover that whole surface again so be very careful around your lemons but if you do mess up just don't worry about it just go back and fix it later. Just pushing that brush around. I want to make sure I completely cover everything. And again, I don't want to see anything white by the time I'm done. 
I don't want to see any paper surface. I want my brush strokes to be from side to side now because it is a tabletop. And even though I'm not painting in any wood grain, I just don't want random brush strokes. I want everything nice and smooth going from left to right. I'm also blending it into the background because again, I don't want any harsh lines for this painting. I just want a smooth and gradual transition from the table to the background. And I'm going to smooth around the shadow as well. And again, with a clean, soft, dry brush, I'm just going to go around and smooth out my edges. Picking up excess paint with a paper towel and then going back. If I keep too much paint on my brush, I'm just going to make a mess out of my edges. So I try to keep my brush clean all the time as I do this. There's more light on this part of the lemon than the rest, so I'm just going in with a bit more cadmium yellow, and I'm just going to add a little bit and smooth it out. I'm adding a bit more yellow in this section too. And now I'm going to try and adjust my mid-tones. I've got a bit of yellow here. And then mixing it into the shadowed area. And just fixing that edge. And I'll just smooth that out, softening everything up. And now I've got some burnt umber mixed in with some burnt sienna and I'm going to start applying it around the lemon just on the left hand side of the background. I want a lighter area in this section. It just softens the whole painting rather than just a stark black background. And I'm going to keep adding a bit more burnt sienna just to lighten it up a little bit more. It just creates a nice classical feel to the painting. 
And I didn't want to start with this when I started my background because then it would have been too light. I still wanted to be mostly black with just a hint of reddish brown. So it's easier to just go in with the black and then just lighten it up a little bit with the burnt sienna and burnt umber. Now I'm smoothing this out. And now I need to let this first layer dry. And now my first layer is dry. As you can see, the painting looks a little bit dull. It looks like it's kind of blurry and out of focus in the back, but that's just because it's dry and we did soften the edges. That'll come back to life with a nice coat of varnish after. Even though this is paper, I could still spray on some varnish. Now I want to start painting in some little pock marks and I'm using again a mixture of burnt sienna and burnt umber. Even though these are just tiny little pock marks, I need to still keep in mind my values and consider them. So these marks will be darker as I go more towards the rear of the lemon. And as I go more towards the front of the lemon, I need to lighten up my mixture. And I do this by adding a little bit of yellow. And I just randomly dab on my marks. I'm not being particular, but I do want to make sure that they're not uniform. I don't want this to look like an organized pattern. They have to be very random and natural looking. I'm also keeping very light pressure on the brush. If the pressure is too heavy, I'll end up with a bigger mark than I want. If this happens, just wipe it off. And I refill my brush with paint. I reload it with paint and I continue dabbing. You want to make sure you load up enough paint on your brush so you can place several dabs. But you don't want too much paint where you'll create big blobs of paint and then have to wipe them off. So just try and find the perfect balance. This is very repetitive so I'll speed it up just a bit as I go around the lemon just applying little marks all over. And I want my little markings to be completely random. Some are bigger, some are smaller. What I don't want to be doing with this is constantly looking at my reference photo or at my still life setup and trying to replicate these dots exactly as I see them on the lemon. That would just be sheer craziness, so that's not what I'm trying to do at all. I just want to randomly put them down without trying to replicate exactly what I see on my reference. And I'm done with all my puck marks, and I'll just go ahead and correct the bottom of my lemon and just make a few adjustments, round it out again. If you're an acrylic painter and you're having a hard time with your blending, you can try using a um, blending medium. I think they work quite well. Of course, it doesn't compare to blending with oil paints, but it does really help in Improve the flow, either a blending medium or a flow medium. And again, I've got some burnt umber here and I added a bit of burnt sienna and I'm just fine tuning my shadowed area. Just softly going over. I'm not pushing too hard. I want everything nice and soft. My shadow is a little bit too light in this area, so I'm going to darken it up. I'll be using pure burnt umber in the far back of the lemon and as I go towards the center of the lemon I'll blend that in with a little bit of burnt sienna just to lighten it up a bit. And I'm just very gently dabbing on some color here using very light pressure. 
and I have very little paint on my brush. Otherwise, I'll end up with a mess, just like I did right here. And I'm just going to smooth that out. And this is just an old fluffy brush and it's clean and dry and I'm just using this to spread the paint around and blend it in. And I'll be adding a few more dots here. I want to finish getting these in before I start applying lighter colored marks. And now with a soft dry brush, I'm gently going to dab my dots just to soften them up a bit. And now I am going to start adding some lighter paint and I've mixed in a little bit of white with my cadmium yellow light. And I'm just dabbing with my paintbrush again using light pressure. And I'll repeat the process that I did with the darker paint except this time with lighter paint. And this is going to start adding some light to our lemon. It's a little difficult to see right now, but it is one shade lighter than what's already there, so you can see it. I just want to gradually build up my lights. By adding those darker marks to the lemon, as well as the lighter highlights, we're giving texture to our lemon now. And when we look at the painting once it's finished, the mind is going to feel this texture. It's creating an illusion. I want the lemon to look as though you can actually reach out and feel those bumps. This bottom part is also being hit by the light, so it's important to lighten this area as well. And again, I'm not loading my brush with too much paint. I just want a bit on there, just enough to work in. And I prefer to reload frequently rather than have too much paint directly go onto my painting surface. I also wanted to mention if you're new to Liquin and you're going to be using it, make sure you're working in a well ventilated area. It's very strong. And also if you do start using it when you start off the painting, make sure you use it in all your paint mixture throughout. You don't want to use some in just some colors and not in others. Use it throughout the whole painting and you should be fine. But just about 20% Liquin, no more than that. You don't want to use too much then you might compromise the integrity of the paint, break the binder. So just use it sparingly. Now I've got a bit more white in my yellow mixture. So it's lightening it up again. And I'm going to dab on another layer of lighter colored paint. And you could slowly see the light starting to shine on this lemon.
and I'm just randomly placing marks, gently dabbing paint on here and there. It's a very repetitive process, so it does require patience. You don't want to go fast. If you go fast, you can end up making mistakes or slapping on too much paint and ruining your lemon. So just dig deep, find that patience, and just take your time with any painting. If you get tired, you just put it aside for a bit and then come back later with fresh eyes. Oftentimes, people who are new to painting might be tempted to call it done at this stage. And it's really not finished. It's still in very raw form. It's still what I like to say crude. And I can tell it's unfinished because when I look at that first layer, I see blotchiness. There's unevenness in the paint. Nothing is even. And you see that a lot in beginner paintings. A lot of people give up just a little too soon on their paintings rather than persevering and adding on those extra layers. And it's those extra layers that are going to make a world of difference on the painting. Now, as I go toward the rear of the lemon, I still apply some of the lighter color, but I'm taking it easy. I'm not applying too much. If I put too much, then I'm going to ruin my shadow and I'll ruin my values. I don't want to lighten up this area. I just want to suggest some bits of light hitting on the bumps or on the texture of the lemon. And I'll speed this up just a bit here. Just enough to speed this along, but you could still quite clearly see exactly what I'm doing. And I'm going to carry down those lighter colors down on the shadow underneath also. Just a little bit, not too much. And I'll add just another little pop of light here. Not too much. I don't want to overdo it. And now I mixed a bit of black using the burnt umber and the cobalt blue. And I'm just going to dab on a little black paint. And now just a dab of burnt umber around the black part I just put down, just creating a slight shadow. And now I added a bit of white to my black mixture and I'm putting just a little drop here. 
just a little bit of light reflecting on that very tip of the lemon. And now I have some burnt sienna paint and I'm going to add another layer lightening up this section of the background. It's going to give me a really nice warm tone after. It'll also create a nice glow around the lemon. And now I added a bit of yellow to the burnt sienna and this will give us a little bit more light in this area, making our lemon glow even more. I'm going to push that paint up a little bit higher. And now I'm slowly blending in a bit of burnt umber to darken it up as I spread it outwards. I don't want to push it too far back in my shadowed area. I want it really nice and dark back there. And now I have some of my black mixture and I'm just going to start spreading that around and I'll blend everything together. And now I'm adding just a little bit more burnt sienna and I'll blend everything together. See how much the lemon seems to glow now just by putting lighter color on the background. And now I'm ready to start detailing inside the lemon. So I'm just going to adjust my whites. And again, it's a mixture of white mixed with just a tiny dab of blue. If you find it looks too blue when you mix it, you can add just a tiny little drop of burnt umber and this will gray out your white. Not too much though. Just always mix very small amounts as I said earlier. And then you can add more if you need more, but if you start off with too much, you'll end up wasting paint. I just want a small brush too. A big brush will make it a lot more difficult. So at least with a small brush, I am able to get in there and just start working on those finer details. And I also waited until my yellow paint was dry before doing this. And I'm just ever so carefully going around the edge.
because I'm starting to work with fine details here, it's not something I can rush through. I have to take my time and I'm adjusting everything as I go along, making sure everything's just right. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but I don't want messy brush strokes either. And I'm adjusting my shapes. I want to get them just right. As long as they're believable, that's all that matters. So I don't want any straight edges here. I want them nice and rounded. And now I took my yellow mixture and I added in just a little bit more burnt umber and a touch of burnt sienna. Not too dark, just about a shade darker. And I'm just going to shade this area again, just in select places, just to add a little bit more punch. And I'm going to start pulling down some of this darker paint, just making a few lines here and there. I'm not covering up the whole thing. I just want a little bit of paint, just a little bit of color in random areas. There, that's looking better already. Don't be afraid to use color. Don't be afraid to go darker in some areas and brighter and lighter in other areas. This is what will make your painting come to life. We don't want a flat painting by having everything the same tone. We want to make sure we have a good range of values in everything we paint. And if everything is the same tone, our paintings are flat. Again, I'm using very little pressure and I don't have much paint on my brush. I'm just barely tickling the paper with a brush, just gently touching here and there. And in case you're wondering, the brush I'm using here is the number two round liner brush. It's a generic brand from an art store. And it's a perfect size for working these small areas. I'm speeding this up just a little bit, just so you don't fall asleep watching me paint this. I'm using the white mixture I used earlier, the blue and white, and I'm just refining the lines inside. Just refining those details as I go along. And I'm trying to be careful to not go into my yellow. Now I'm going to use the white and blue mixture and I'm going to start dabbing some bits of light inside the lemon just in random places I 
and I want to have enough paint on my brush this time. I want to leave enough paint deposited onto the wet paint below without having it mixed in. And I'm just randomly going along inside, just dropping some paint. And the reason I'm using this mixture, the one mixed with the blue, is because I want a couple of different, different tones inside. And for my final highlights, I'll use some pure white and those will pop even more. I added just a little touch of blue to my white mixture, just because I had my lemon sitting out by the window and this is probably the sky also reflecting bits of light onto the lemon. So I'm just accurately trying to represent this and it adds more interest to the lemon also. And now I have some pure white. And again, I'm just going to start dropping some white in random areas inside the lemon. And I want to make sure it's thick enough on my brush that it'll stick and I don't have to push my brush into wet paint. If I have to start pushing down into the yellow, my paints are going to start mixing and then I'll just end up with muddied colors. As I keep adding bits of light to the lemon, it's starting to look a little bit more wet now. Because this is so repetitive, I'll just speed this up a bit as I just keep going around and just keep depositing that paint inside the lemon. Some of my marks are lines and other marks are just little random dots. I want to replicate the texture inside the lemon. And I'm going to keep working all the way around inside, making sure I'm adding bits of light everywhere. And now I have some cadmium yellow mixed in with white and I'll go around the edge just painting in some of the peel. And I'm going to do this all around the lemon.
Now this edge was a little bit tricky because now it's extending past my lemon, but that's okay. I'll just fix the um, lemon after and it'll all tie in together nicely. I'm painting this edge so much lighter than the rest of the lemon on this side because it's picking up light. So it's shining light through the peel and it's looking a lot brighter than the rest of the lemon. And now with a dry brush, I am going to smooth out this thicker section. And I'll keep building the yellow on this part. I want it to be nice and bright so that you feel that it's the light showing through. And now I'm going to fix my edge with the lighter yellow. Again, I'm keeping it brighter down here because there's more light coming through on this part. And I'm going to smooth this out again using a dry brush. Just gently patting and blending it in. Now I added just a bit of burnt sienna to my yellow and I'm just gently going to add in some of this color again just by patting down my brush and gently blending everything in. I want everything to have a nice smooth transition. And this is lighter, so I'm making sure I leave that slight indent, that little mark inside my lemon. So I'm just brushing in some lighter color around that mark. And smoothing everything here. You could take a fan brush too on this edge if you'd like. I'm extending some of the yellow to the rear just a little bit. I don't want too much because it's still a shadowed area so I don't want it as bright as the back and I will adjust it later and darken it up but I'll leave just a bit of that yellow just so we have some light coming in around the edge. This is actually burnt sienna just to deepen the tone of my shadowed area. It's just that the light is picking it up and creating a glare. And now I'm just going to very gently build a shadow. I still have a little bit of the burnt sienna left on my brush and I'm just going to gently dab that in. Now I'm going to blend in some pure burnt umber, just darkening up that rear area and it'll blend in with everything else.
And now with some burnt umber and burnt sienna, I'm going to start adding little marks on this lemon as well. I'll also darken the shadow here just slightly, just gently dabbing paint. And I'll just speed this up just a little bit. Again, just very repetitive work. I'll just randomly keep dabbing paint here. Now I'm making the shadow immediately below the edge, just one shade darker than the rest. Just by again, I keep dabbing the paint on and it's just a slight variation, but it's an important variation in color. And I'll slightly adjust my yellow, doing the same thing. If you closely examine the edge of the lemon, there are little circles that you see at the very tip. And some of these circles are shaded and others catch the light. And this is what I'm painting in here. So I'm not making just a straight line. I'm just dabbing on, just simulating those little circles that are catching light. When painting realism, it's all about those little details, those little things that you might not think of adding in. These are what contribute or will lend to a nice realistic painting. Now I'll repeat the process with some burnt sienna with a touch of burnt umber just to add little dots of shadows around the edge. So it's all about adding layers and the formula is pretty simple. You block in and you build your base layer, usually starting from your darkest colors. 
and then you keep adding on your layers going from dark to light and at the very end that's when you add your final details and then by the time you're done you have something that's realistic. All right, speaking of layers, I'm going to add another one to the tabletop now. So I'm just going to brush on some burnt sienna, just deepen the richness of the tabletop. I love burnt sienna. It's just such a beautiful, deep, rich color. And I'm going to extend it right up to the lemon. Oops, and I made a little mark there, wipe that off. I'm being very careful. I just want to brush that in there just to add another layer. Again, I'm going to extend this layer of paint into the background and just work it in there. And now in order to build proper perspective, I'm going to add in some straight up burnt umber. It's not mixed with anything. And I'm just going to add that in. It's darker than the burnt sienna. It's a little hard to see because of the glare but the foreground will be slightly darker than the rest of the tabletop and it's going to blend into the shadow on the right hand side. When you paint your foreground darker this way, what it does is it pulls it closer to you. You feel as though that part of the painting is the closest to you and as it gets lighter towards the back, it feels like it's further away. You would do the same thing when painting a landscape. Now I'm just going to adjust my dark shadowed area with the same black mixture that we use in the beginning. I just want to deepen this and adjust my lemon as well. How about that glare? oil paints it can't be avoided unfortunately and now I'm going to work on the shadow underneath this lemon and I have my black mixture with burnt umber and blue and I'm just going to gently go underneath and I'll work on the shadow underneath this lemon also Most of the time when you're painting light colors with oils you don't get that much of a glare but the minute you work with dark colors there's always a glare. Dark oil paintings are also difficult to photograph for this reason. They just pick up so much light. Light bounces all over dark paintings. I'll just smooth out this shadow. Just blend it in. All right, now I want to start blending this edge. My paint is still a bit wet, so I just want to soften everything. Now I just want to continue with some slight detail work. I'm adding just a dab of dark color. I took some of my yellow mixture and added a little bit of burnt umber in there just to make a slight dark edge. I'm being very gentle and just using the very tip of the brush. I really don't want a thick line here, so I'm being extra careful.
when I work with oils, I tend to let them sit for a while too in between sittings. I want my paint to dry a little bit so that I am able to layer on top of everything. If I try and work wet into wet, then I would be painting a la prima and I would have to do that to paint impressionism and not the style of realism that I paint. So for this reason, I always let things dry a little bit in between. So usually a day. I'll paint certain sections, I leave it aside, I let it dry and I'll either work on something else or I'll come back to it the next day. Then I'm able to continue layering. So if you're at a point in your painting, you're stuck and everything is just turning to mud, put it aside, let it dry a bit, then go back. And now with a little burnt sienna, I'll go underneath this lemon and I'll just add a bit of a shadow and I'll just gently apply the paint again. Just softly work it in there. And now I'm going to add just a little bit of light under this lemon and I'm just going to dab it in there the way I did before. So I'm just bringing this in and pulling it down and now I'm just going to dab it. Rather than blending everything, I'm just going to gently dab and I'll speed this up just a little bit. I'm just adding a final highlight on the edge of this dent and just patting that down, softening it again. And now I am just adding a bit of burnt umber mixed with burnt sienna, just making my shadow richer and deeper.
And now I've got some pure white paint. Now that the inside of my lemon is dry, I'm going to apply a few more dabs of bright white paint, just for some final highlights. I make sure my brush is loaded with plenty of paint. I want to drop down nice and thick drops of paint. This way my highlights will be even brighter. Our lemon is looking really nice and wet now just by adding those bits of light. And we're also in the home stretch now. These are just the very final details. Now I want to add the brightest bits of light on top of the lemon and to do this I'm just going to go ahead and use some pure white and I'm just going to quickly dab it on there. And I'm going to gently spread this around to the top. And I'm going to extend it to the lower part of the lemon as well without bringing it all the way down naturally. And I'm not reloading my brush. I don't want too much paint being loaded onto the lemon. I'm giving this a final pass with some burnt umber. I want it wet before I paint in my reflections. Okay, so this is going to be the very final detail and we're going to paint in some slight reflections on the tabletop and I want a darker mixture for this. So I've got yellow mixed in with burnt sienna and I'm just gently applying it, trying to mimic the shape of the lemon being reflected on the table. It's important to note that reflections are usually darker, so always go a shade or two darker than your subject. Even if you're painting, for example, reflections in water, your reflections should always be darker than the actual subject. So if the sky is being reflected in water, it's going to be a darker shade than the sky actually is. So I'm going to make sure I lighten this up enough so that we could see the reflection, but it still has to be darker than the, than the lemon itself. So I very gently blend that in. It's important I don't have any harsh lines here, otherwise it'll just look a little bit nasty. I don't want harsh lines in my reflections. It has to be very soft. And with a fan brush, I'll just smooth that out even more. Making sure we get rid of any hard edges. And I'm doing the same here. I really hate that you can't see this because of the glare. 
but it's just a rounded shape, just mimicking the shape of the lemon. And again, with a darker yellow, and I'm going to blend everything out. I'm going to brighten this up just a bit, but still keeping it darker than the lemon. And again, I am going to blend it out and smooth it. And now here is the final piece. As you can see now that it's not wet and there's no glare on it, it's quite dark and rich. The colors are really deep. The lemons are basking in light. The shadowed part of the lemons seem to emerge from the dark and the inside of the cut lemon appears to be wet and just reflecting a lot of the light. I hope you learned a lot. I apologize for the glare, it was unavoidable. I'm going to see what I can do in the future in regards to perhaps a different setup, different lighting, or a different angle. And just to try and avoid having so much glare on the work as I paint. I hope you learned a lot. If you have any questions, please be sure to just put them in the comments. Somebody else might have the exact same questions as you do. And it'll help everybody if you let me know in the comments. So until next time, take care.